FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast, where morning drive time meets late night talk show, and we aim to entertain and enlighten and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. This is part two, and since I already titled this episode, it is, what is it? One, two, zero, two, zero, one. Wait, wait no. Oops, I messed one, up already. Two, zero, two, two, zero. zero, two, one. Yes, that's it. A. Yes, because uh, it was a palindrome in part one. We talked a lot about those, and yes. it happened to be coming out on that same date. So, um, yeah. Um, now it's Saturday. <laughs> 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 so we're, yeah, broadcasting from the future, the past, whatever you're listening to this. We're time travelers. We but, are. Yeah, the best. But Exactly. So now that we're in this part, we're going to do uh, some of the segments that we normally, you know, do in a regular episode. And I'm going to bring back uh, an oldie but a favy. Um, that's a new <laughs> thing I'm coining. I know that's not a thing. It is now. Um, and that is letters. Letters. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. So what I did, uh, and Courtney, you may have seen it as well. I had posted a something on my Twitter, actually my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm going to see if I can find more of these and do them maybe once a month just to, to, to solicit, solicit some, you know, some responses, some, some interactivity, if you will. <laughs> okay. And, and this one, I had asked people to ask me my top three anything. So they give me the subject and I will give them my top three answers to that. So nice. for, yes. So you, you follow me? What's going on? Yes. Here? Okay. Yes. So I did get a few lovely responses and nice. we will go through them now. And the first one uh, came from Nick over at Megachine. What's up, Nick? He hey, asked Nick. me, he asked me my, and of course, Courtney, you can play along if you have any, you know, of your own. I, I didn't give these to you before. I, um, I'm cheating a little bit because I had time to sit with these and think of answers. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it would be fun to, to find out what's on the top of your head, but I'll give you time as I give you my answers. You'll have time to think about yours. Okay. That's fair. Cool. Okay, cool. So Nick's question to me was what are my three top emotional cinematic scenes so mm. yeah and i'm like oh that's a good one and i will that's already say now tito also gave me a good one today or rather okay well today in our time <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so i'm like well, that's a great one but we'll, we'll come back to that later uh but my three top emotional scenes and i actually put this in numerical order like from <laughs> number like one being emotional. the best yes okay yes so my the number three answer is Fox and the Hound. Oh, okay. And the scene in in particular is um, oh my goodness, I was supposed to have these names because I couldn't remember the names of the characters. <laughs> um, I'm trying to Google it real quick <laughs> because uh, I, need I think know. I know what scene you're talking about, but I I won't steal it from you. I won't steal your thunder there. Oh, Copper and Todd. That's it. I was trying to get their names. But yes, you probably do know what I'm talking about. It's Copper and Todd when I believe they're still young or at least they're getting older and they can't play anymore. Like they can't mm -hmm. hang out and be friends. And then the song like Goodbye, Last Forever and Farewell is like the end. That mm -hmm. whole thing. My goodness, it was devastating. At least for mm -hmm. me, because uh, I know that movie is like old. I'm, I don't know the, the exact year. I don't have that in front of me. Yes, I do. I'm lying came out in 1981 <laughs> um 
but I didn't see it until I was like, I don't know, 10 or something. And yeah. the first time I saw it, it didn't really hit me. But later on, like it was just like, oh, wow, friendship is ending and, and mm-hmm. they can't like. But that particular song, my goodness, that was like the first time I heard a song cry. That was way before Jay-Z came out with his song. But yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Is mean, it's teary right now. I mean, it, it was teary because they had such a great bond, a great friendship, and then they just couldn't be friends anymore. And yeah, and, uh, you know, they had their reasons for, for having to leave. Um, yeah. So that's number three. Mm-hmm. Number, number two was 500 Days of Summer. And okay. the scene is like one of like one of the best scenes, uh, I would say, in not cinematic history, but at least in movies I've seen where it perfectly just portrays. I mean, it, it literally does it uh, reality versus expectation. Like mm-hmm. it's a split screen mm-hmm. scene that where this happens, where our character um played by uh, uh oh my god why am i blanking on names again <laughs> <laughs> um that guy you know i want to yeah, call him robin guy. yeah that guy or, or the star of the movie <laughs> where he uh is going to um this party that he's hoping to see summer who's played mm-hmm. by zoe dachanel and mm-hmm. he, on one side is the expectation of what he thinks is going to happen where they've he mm-hmm. previously had this relationship with her and the reality is on the other side of the split screen of what's actually happening. And mm-hmm. it's ends up first. It starts out very much the same until you realize it's not. And the reality mm-hmm. hurts so much more. And I've, I don't think I've actually been in that same predicament or that situation, but I felt that like on a molecular level. Yeah. And I remember when that movie came out and everyone was talking about it and I was actually going through like a bit of a, a relationship ending kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And people said, you would love this movie, but don't watch it right now. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm glad I listened. (laughs) Yeah. I'm glad I listened because once I did see it, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's what have ruined me. If I watched it like in that state that I was in at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But that scene, um, that harsh look at reality, like, Oh, this is not what I expected to happen. Yeah. That hit hard. So yeah, uh, it didn't make me like cry, but it it still was powerful. So does things to you. It touched you. It does. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. I don't know why I blanked and forgetting his name, but great actor, great human being. Like he, he seems yeah. like a really cool dude. So that movie, by the way, is also very awesome. It's just got other wonderful landmark scenes and I just, just love it. Um, and then my number one uh, with a bullet <laughs> um, <laughs> is, or with a hammer, I'll put, I'll put that. And it's a little <laughs> bit of a, a cheat because it's, it's two scenes uh, but it's kind of one, but it's two moments in the same scene. I'll put it that way. Okay. <laughs> and it's from Avengers Endgame. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. But which scenes? Because I probably know this too. So yeah. Go for it. <laughs> the first scene is when, and let me set the stage for those of you who have not seen, like the two of you who haven't seen the movie, <laughs> is um, <laughs> Thor is a, just about to be like murdered to death uh, with his own axe by mm-hmm. Thanos and mm-hmm. um, all of a sudden we just see Thor's hammer his other weapon of choice start to float and lift and then zhwoosh, right by like <laughs> both of them caught miraculously and heroically by none other than Steve Rogers Captain America and he just kind of looks back and then I knew it but then if you're in the theater back when you know theaters were a thing and people were mm-hmm. you know all together Mm-hmm. The whole theater just erupted. And I think so did I. I don't at this point now, I can't remember if I was standing or floating or flying, but <laughs> I had the same reaction as Thor. And I was with my sister and we were both like just looking at each other like, yes, you know, like Thor in Ragnarok, basically mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just that level of excitement. Like mm-hmm. that was, I think, like one of the like pinnacle moments in cinematic history for me, for my cinematic like viewing pleasure, like all of this build up for that Mm -hmm. and then only for it to top itself and get better in Hmm. what is it like 10, 15 minutes, if not that when every 
hero so far in the MCU comes out to mm-hmm. battle and it's called the portal scene in case, you know, you, you're trying to mm-hmm. keep track of and just all every hero. First of all, they were all dead, but they came back to life and now they're joining this. They weren't dead. They were, they were snapped. They were snapped, but they weren't existing anymore, except but in they, our hearts. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't mean they're dead though. Dead means like dead. And not coming back, like, like vision. <laughs> but <laughs> then again, he, he, he was a robot. But, um, and then there's this whole WandaVision show that's happening. That's we don't have time to talk about that right now. Um, but we don't. But it's so good. Oh my god, it it really is. It's quite interesting. So quite interesting. So I I put those two scenes together, but to make up this, you know, one category of a movie. So I'm cheating a little that, bit, Nick. I'm counts. sorry, but yeah, no, that counts. Yeah. Is one. <laughs> yeah. So I but those two scenes, since they're so close together, that's why again, one scene. But those two definitely left a really emotional, like it it made me feel like it was well rewarded. Like I was like, yes, mm-hmm. this is what I came here for. I did not know that I was going to be feeling these emotions and I'm mm-hmm. feeling them and I'm loving it. And um it was it was amazing. So I have two honorable mentions because these came to mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you're going to actually see a trend of this because I have quite a few honorable mentions. Um, the movie Contact, uh-huh. uh, which came out back in the 90s and, and Jodie Foster's character mm-hmm. is like in that court. Movie. I love it too. And she's, it's basically just the last quarter, I guess, of the movie because it's a very long movie. It <laughs> but, is. A lot happens. But it's good though. A lot happens, but it's good. And I, it's more of her emotional scene at the end in the court talking about what she experienced, what she went through and, and just her just bringing it. And mm-hmm. that was, I mean, it didn't do anything to me emotionally, but I loved that scene. And then for her to only be um, uh, uh, justified at the end when James Woods character who, I mean, he's a terrible human being in real life. But he tends to play mm-hmm. those characters pretty well, too. And how he just got shut down mm-hmm. by the fact that, like, yeah, but she came back with a tape full of static. But then they're like, well, there's like 17 hours of static. What do you got to say about that? Right. So. Right. So that, I mean, I'm like, yes. Again, Thor Ragnarok. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was an emotional scene. And the last one is one um, that kind of surprised me, but it shouldn't. Because this comes from Ava DuVernay who so far everything that I have seen her do or every like movie she's directed or, or mm-hmm. pretty much anything she's directed. Mm-hmm. Um, she manages to pull the tears out of my eyes without my, like <laughs> I was going to say without my consent, but I've since said, you know what, whatever you're just here for my tears. Um, I will just bottle them up for you because I feel that gives you strength <laughs> to continue mm-hmm. to do what you do. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. I accept it. Um, pretty much every, like I said, Selma has made me cry. Um, the, what is it? The 13th. I mean, that was just heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the movie that it almost made my list, even though it's, I'm talking about it now is wrinkle in time. And the scene in particular, it happens like in the middle of the movie and, uh, Oprah Winfrey's character, whose name I cannot remember. I know it's Miss what's it or something. What's it? Who, which one of them? one of them and she's talking about how the it uh is like uh growing like the darkness and she explains what it is and it's like just i think the i I don't want to call it hatred but that's kind of what i was relating it to and knowing Mm -hmm. like when that movie came out a lot of that was happening in the real world and Mm -hmm. how there was just a lot of darkness that just kept spreading further Mm -hmm. that was just the it getting stronger and it was something about the way that she was describing it the way it it was on screen and how i was feeling in that theater at that time that i'm like what's what is this moisture coming from my eyes and (laughs) it it just affected me in that way and i don't know if it if that was intended but hey it happened i know it didn't get like a a great uh box office report but it doesn't matter really to me it doesn't because i mean i was there i saw it i enjoyed it so Mm -hmm. I mean, that movie itself, too, it's got a lot of it's I feel it's better than people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. You know, I never read the book, but I love the way it looked on the screen. And that yeah. particular scene in particular, you know, just 
it hit me. So, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, those are my top three scenes plus two extras. <laughs> um, <laughs> did that give you any time to think of any of your own? Any cinema- it did. Uh, emotional? Okay. It did. So, there's a movie called Losing Isaiah with Halle Berry. I'm not a huge Halle Berry fan, but I this movie is just... It's an older, I mean, not older, but like, I guess, 90s movie um, where she plays a, a drug addict. And so she and she has a son named Isaiah. And through a series of events, he like CPS um, collects him. And, you know, because she is strung out a lot of times and can't properly care for um, little Isaiah. He's, mm-hmm. little, he's so cute. You know, he's just this little, little baby. Um and so he, I, I, I haven't seen the movie in a while, but so I can't tell you all the details, but like he ends up, um, a white lady ends up um, adopting him or caring for him. I'm not sure if she adopts him. Um, now you got to put aside any like white savior complexes you may have. And I definitely don't care for that trope in movies, but in this mm-hmm. case, like the mother, you know, the the adoptive mother, you know, somehow ended up with him and she really did care for him and she fought for him and she she really did care for him. And so, but in the meantime, Halle Berry's character was like trying to get her life together and get cleaned up and she she got a place, a nice place for them to stay at and she wanted to get Isaiah back. And so, um you know, plot happens. And by the end of it, you know, she's, I believe she's um, either she's with him. I can't remember. Either Somehow, somehow the little Isaiah um, does get taken from the adoptive or I'm going to call her foster because I don't know if she actually adopted him, but the foster mother, he gets separated from her um, because I think Halle Berry's character, um, like I said, gets her life together and he, and she wants to get her son back. Well, Isaiah at this point Mm. had grown close to the foster mother. And, you know, so it was very traumatic for him to be all of a sudden separated from him. And I think even she had trouble with him at first, but, you know, they they grew together and grew through it and they really loved each other. Well, so long story short, (laughs) towards (laughs) the end of the movie, you know, he is fussing. I think he's with a social worker. Um, somehow he is just in this room with some person and he is upset. He's, he's crying, you know, he's like, I don't know, three or four. So he's a little thing and he is just crying for his mama and he's crying for his mama. Um, the foster lady um, kind of hears him call, hears him crying and screaming. And she, you know, peers from around the corner of the doorway um, and she's just kind of watching. And so he looks up, and he sees her and his face just lights up and like even now I'm just getting teary but Mm. his his little face just lights up and he just you know he immediately stops crying or stops screaming and then he just runs to her and they like meet up and they you know she falls on the floor with him and they're like hugging and crying and it's just such an emotional moment because apparently I believe they hadn't seen each other for a while but they had you know been separated and it just was very clear that that was his mom Mm. um and maybe and I think maybe Halle Berry's character did actually get him back but it just wasn't working like she got clean but maybe she didn't stay clean or something and so they then had to you know put him back in the system or something so it was very just a lot of a lot of this poor kid had just gone through a lot Mm. um but finally he was reunited with his mom um the foster lady And it was just, it's such an emotional scene and it doesn't matter how many times I see it, it don't matter how, you you know, it just, it just gets me, Mm. it just gets me so much. But that's one scene that always like, just always kind of does me in. Um, Another scene that immediately comes to mind is um, Harry Potter, because I'm a big Potterhead in terms of the movies not so much the books but the movies I really love um and I'm trying to think of like one of the scenes that really (sighs) there's there's a few scenes like in the later movies like when it starts to get really 
a little bit darker and a little bit more serious when, right. when the kids are growing up and they're starting to like mobilize and fight. I can't honestly tell you one scene right now. I would have to think about that, but there's there's a few scenes in like the later Harry Potter movies that, that really get me just because, you know, you've been on the journey with them for so long and then mm-hmm. finally, finally everything's coming to a head and it's just really um cool now is the question (laughs) cinematic like like films or can it be other types of programming or i I kept it i really did keep it to films um although he just said cinematic scenes so i Mm. just okay let me just let me just keep it to cinema because i definitely could go down the tv route i could go down (laughs) you know things to that nature but i'm like nope let me just keep it keep it to movies and i did the best i could and i forgot i just want to throw in um noel really quickly the one from um that came out last year on disney plus starring yeah um, yeah yeah anna that, kendrick anna kendrick yes and um uh, it surprised me and she hmm. basically i don't i don't really want to spoil it because it's still so new mm-hmm. but there is a there's just this um the ending scene or it's not an ending scene but she is in the presence of children and or stopping by someplace and she gets recognized and the Aww. way she's recognized is the, is what you know would hit me like surprisingly mm-hmm. like oh what, am i feeling things <laughs> oh what is happening here <laughs> my heart is growing like three sizes so three sizes. Yeah. so but yeah just i just forgot to throw that in there but um I well, suppose you can a, just, yeah, you can give it a, a mention, I suppose. What? I'll give it a mention. Well, another movie, and I, I'm, I, one movie that always sticks out for me is also Avengers um, Endgame. And the scenes you mentioned do get me, but I, I have a couple that really, well, several. I mean, <laughs> shoot, let me think about this. Um, so for sure, when Iron Man... Um, snapped and he is talking to pepper it actually took me a couple watches to well maybe maybe two watches to like see the full circle or or, you know Mm -hmm. identify the full circle where she's like i'm here i love you we'll be okay well i don't even know if she said i love you i think they were just she was just kind of giving him permission to let go she knew that it was she knew that it was the end for Mm -hmm. him Mm -hmm. he wasn't gonna survive it and she just immediately goes into um care mode she she doesn't you know show a whole lot of emotion she tells him you know we'll be okay you can rest now and it's it's when she says just just that whole scene is very emotional just because you know that what's about to happen you know he's not gonna make it and it's like oh my god iron man is not gonna make it Mm -hmm. um after after you know he was at first really against doing this whole mission in the first place you know he's got little morgan he's finally settled down with pepper um but she just her strength in that um scene i think really added to the like huge emotional tension and to the like weight of the whole situation because yes iron man dying is is very sad but like for me seeing pepper hold it together just long enough to see him and hold him as he passes on is just right <sighs> and and it's it's interesting how how that happens because it's it's the same thing well okay let me just explain what i'm about to say with <laughs> that scene in particular yes I, um tony dying is sad but for me what affects me more is how it affects the people around him Everybody such as else. Yes. Uh, uh, pepper and yes. i think i probably like just add on to you I think I was hit when like, oh no, Peter Parker just showed up just to, you know, say goodbye. And I'm like, oh, uh, my heart, like you already kind of smashed it to pieces. And now. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that. I mean, her reaction really hit me the hardest because you know what they've been through and you know that like they finally got like what they both want, which is life with each other and family with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, When she also said you can rest, that line was, I mean, it hit me hard in that first moment, but it took me a little while to realize that's, that's literally what the advice that she gave him when he was debating if he should go forward with the mission or not. And like, tell them that, yes, there's a way to, to stop this and go back in time and reverse all of this. She, you know, she, they're talking in their living room after he figured out, yes, I have solved time travel and I figured out the issue. 
And he's like, but I could just put it all away. Nobody has to know. We can just continue our life. And then she's like, but will you be able to rest? Mm-hmm. And it's that's such a profound like I've that's so prov- profound that I've actually used that that sentiment, you know, when trying to make decisions in my own life is like, OK, this is a big thing. How do I how do I move forward with it? It's like, OK, do I have peace about it? Do I, you know, will I have peace mm-hmm. about it? Am I going to be able to sleep at night? And so she said that to him early on. And then to kind of wrap up his story, she she gives him permission to let go and saying, you know, now you can rest. And it just, it just melts me every (laughs) single time. And then, you know, to Mm. see everybody else just giving them their space. And then she, when he does die, she finally can kind of let go and grieve herself. It just, uh, it gets me every time because it's so, it's so well-deserved. Just like you said, it just, the whole the whole MCU building up to this, but anyway, um, I do have a <laughs> couple of honorable too. mentions. I'm very, I mean, it does get me like every time. It means so much to me. Um, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that are TV shows, so they're a little bit a little bit cheaty. Um, speaking of cheaty hmm. um, and the good, I want to say <laughs> I that, that seemed like a. <laughs> a little not a segue but um yeah it's a good whatever segue. Yeah. I, actually I know where you're going that. but i'll say that um the the finale of the good place i just love that show i think it's so innovative and so creative and i don't i won't give it away what the finale is but the finale has to do with chidi one of the characters on the show and every time i watch it every time it mm-hmm. it it gets me it's mm-hmm. basically I don't want to give away, but um, it's so the ending, just that whole final like season uh, is just very different than how I, I'd imagined. And, but it was very well done. And just how each of the characters kind of um, uh, go on to their next adventure is very mm-hmm. satisfying. And it's very, it's very heartbreaking, but especially Chidi's um, um, path is just very um, heartbreaking, but two more. Okay, so The Office, when, (laughs) um, actually The Office finale, I have a thing about finales, like in shows, and Mm -hmm. because especially when I have a show that I just love, I latch onto it, and it's something that's a part of me, more movies too, but shows are just a kind of a different feel. But when I have a show that I latch onto, and I really just start to love the characters and you know when there's a finale whether it's overdue or too soon it always it always just really gets me in the feel so the Mm -hmm. office finale is one of those um there are many very uh emotional moments in seven deadly sins which is a an anime and which i've never finished yet so uh, oh my god like i don't know how many episodes or seasons like, i just know i'm still in season one like i started it it's just i never got back to it so oh, get back to it there's four seasons available i think they're airing the fifth season in japan right now so we won't see it for a little while but uh oh, so it's not four... over, over so well you're saying huh? there's moments you're saying it's there's moments in that show there's moments yeah there's uh, there's no finale yet but the uh not for the anime i think the manga that it's based on is is over like the story is over but yeah there's got a while to go for that um last one last one i promise is avatar the last airbender Uh, there's so many emotional moments in that show and um i have a bullet for that the first bullet would be iroh when he sings um leaves from the vine Mm. um Mm -hmm. i actually i'll take that back the 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 series finale always really gets me because it is again it's just such a beautiful ending to such a perfect and beautiful um show Mm -hmm. and i love it but um also but the but i guess the most emotional moment would be um one of the most emotional moments would be iroh singing leaves from the vine just because of what he's singing and what that means for him as a character, like he's a, a father who lost his child, his only child in battle. 
Mm. Um, and he's trying to, you know, teach people. He's trying to teach people what he couldn't teach his son. And, you know, that's a thing. But um, also because that, I believe that is the episode, the first episode where um, a new voice actor. Um, oh, yeah, because uh, he had passed away. Yeah. So Mako, the original uh, voice actor for Iroh, had passed away. Um, he Apparently he had a long battle with cancer. And so he, he did not. He did not win that battle and he passed away. And so, I don't know, it's just a very, when you look into the deeper levels of it, it really just, is like, oh my gosh, this is, this is insane. Mm-hmm. And then to find yeah. out later on that the the new voice actor for Iroh won't, it, I think he won't sing Leaves from the Vine just out of respect for Mako. Um, mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't sing it at, he would go to like fan conventions and stuff like that, but he wouldn't, he would never sing Leaves from the Vine just out of respect for Mako. Um, it's just such a mm. beautiful, but so sad, like reminder and tribute to him. Right. <sighs> Done. Let's <sighs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. I will throw in uh, just as a TV show uh, for just definitely the season finale of lost, which I know divides yes. many, many people, but for me, I'm one of those people, maybe like the few people that actually loved it and enjoyed it and mm, mm-hmm. and and got me in my tears because like mm, oh, for me yeah. it was it was worth it. But I know it's not for everybody because a lot of people were just upset <laughs> the way it ended. Like what? Yeah. Seriously? But no. Yeah. One day I'm so, gonna give Lost another chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it it really is a great show, but it definitely is a time investment, especially in this day and age where Mm -hmm. you want your shows to be like between six, maybe 13 episodes per season. But there is a lot, a lot of character building. I mean, then again, you're the one who got me on Walking Dead, even though we both walked away from it. (laughs) But, um, you know, it's a lot of that, a lot of character building and also a lot of walking. So, you know, but it's it's, it's good. (laughs) It it is good. I love the way how they play with time and time travel and just... magic i suppose and science and faith and just it's great it's all great. of it yeah all of it all of it um but yes we will move on to la black who gave me just a one word answer or question and food so <laughs> for me of course it is the difficult thing to to narrow down the top three i had written down one two three four five six yeah six things uh two of them are super specific and usually my answers are pretty much the same i don't have a rank for these things but i think i'll just mm-hmm. go with the first three i listed as my top three all right in no particular order salmon because mm-hmm. it's delicious and it's it's good and it's good for you mm-hmm. home baked cookies had to make sure i put the home baked in there because don't give me any chips ahoy that it's gross that is trash food <laughs> Like not not good trash food, just like immediately, like you purchase it, just, just trash, throw it away. just yeah. throw it away, yeah, You're right. And then the last one would be barbecue ribs, and I'll I'll leave it up to you. It could be either a barbecue sauce or a dry rub. I will take either one. Ooh, I like that. I like that idea mm-hmm. of of either or or both. You know, or both. Why yeah, because I mean, <laughs> why not both? Or even if you're going to some place where like, yeah, we're having all the ribs you can eat. I'm like, okay, well, I'll take some dry rub and I will take some of uh, the sauce too. And, you know, or uh-huh. if I'll a third, that. yeah, just put it together. Mm-hmm. Dry rub first mm-hmm. and then the sauce. And I mean, I think that's the way ribs should be done or all like meats should be at least consider it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. All right. Definitely. I agree. I agree. So those are my top three. Um, I know it was super short, but do you... Off the top of your head, are there three top three foods for you? So I'd say um, number three. Actually, let me get three foods. Hang on. I mean, okay. I just love food, all of it. <laughs> me too. That's um, why I had such a longer list. So <laughs> so I'd say number three is savory. So whether that is is chips, honestly, chips was the I will first reject thing your answer already. You can't. What? It has to be a food. You just said it's savory. Savory is not a food. You can't go to the store and buy savory. Chips then. Chips. Okay. We'll take chips. chips. Thank you. So I feel like that's kind <laughs> of a terrible answer because that's not like a 
a dish, I, I guess, or like something you have to prepare. But I just I love chips because they are savory. OK. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as as far as snack foods go, I prefer savory over sweet. Now, I do like sweet, but like I'm not a huge chocolate person and I, I, I just prefer the savory. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to say chips. And then number two, that was number three. So number two would be um bread of any kind so we're talking toast we're talking like texas toast we're talking uh garlic knots we're talking i'm even going to include pizza in there because let's be honest the Mm -hmm. best part of pizza is the bread um i mean i I, feel i i I understand what you're doing i get it (laughs) am i cheating it feels like you're cheating because you just named pizza which is a it has bread, but it's not bread. It is pizza, bread, though. It's pizza, bread with pizza stuff has on bread. It. I know, but if we said cheese, and it's like I love all kinds of cheese. I love cheddar. Love I love parmesan. I love pizza, and then that's like, well, those are things that you can put on a pizza. So, pizza huh. is like, it's it's the com- combination of bread, cheese, and let's say if you said sauce or or things like yeah. that. Yeah. So I cannot allow you to just <laughs> use bread as a blanket food because, I mean, if you want to say pizza, then that, that's its own thing. No, <laughs> my answer is still bread. Um, just, <sighs> it's bread, just bread. Um, but my um, could the records ha- just omit pizza from the uh, from <laughs> you know the transcript? Thank you. Oh, whatever. Shush. Um, so, but my number one food would probably be pasta because there's not a pasta that, well, there's no, there's not a pasta that I haven't met that, that I've met that I don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, like I literally created, I didn't create it, but I, I um, prepared a pasta dish for this week and there's plenty to like share with other people, but I'm about to kill it tomorrow. Um, I will say um, I've, at this point, I don't know how many years we've been friends, but that's like one of the facts, the first facts I remembered that you told me that I still remember to this day that you love pasta uh-huh. so much. So, yes, I love. No, I love pasta. And I mean, there's so many ways to do it. There's so many ways to prepare it. There are endless pasta dishes. And I like there's literally so I'm a food prepper. So I prefer to prep all my food on one single day of the week and just like do leftovers for the rest of the week Mm -hmm. sometimes that doesn't happen because i eat all the food or like i don't prepare enough or something Mm -hmm. and so i have to you know fix something midweek or whatever but generally i I like to prepare especially since i'm trying to eat healthy not this week because i got a whole crock pot of pasta (laughs) i'm about to kill but um generally i like to you know prep the food and then you know just parse it out during the week well Pasta is a very easy dish. Um, typically, a, a typical pasta dish is just easy to prepare and it lasts for a while. It's pretty cheap. And, you know, I'm able to, I, I'm also the type of person I'm good with leftovers for more than two or three days. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's like that. Um, but even if I wasn't like that, if it was pasta or spaghetti or any type of like noodly goodness, I'm going to make the, I'm going to eat it every day, mm. <laughs> maybe <laughs> multiple times a day. Um, I just really love pasta. I, I feel you. I, I do too, but I am becoming part of a gluten-free home. Mm. And so all the pasta that, that now, if I get it, like if I'm getting it for the family, then it has to be gluten-free. Uh okay. Same thing goes for the whole bread thing too. I love bread, but I realize that I also have a gluten allergy. And really, yeah. And oh, I, no. it, I mean, it's not terrible. It doesn't do things to me like it does to Ashley. Like it physically hurts her to eat like mm-hmm. gluten. But for me, it's just I'm not necessarily a pleasant person to be around because I may be just gotcha. a tad bit more gassy than usual. So yeah, yeah. and. But I I do enjoy bread. Like I love a good sandwich. Yes, unfortunately, always. unfortunately, it's just mm, yeah. I just have that that side effect, and it's it's sad. But the same and, and unfortunately, not not unfortunately, uh, <laughs> pasta doesn't do that to me. So fortunately, I can still eat regular pasta. Pasta, but 
I'm kind of switching over to gluten-free things. Yeah. Especially if I'm going to be preparing meals for other people. So yeah. can all eat happily without you know problems afterwards. So yeah. Um our next uh is from Lori and she asked, What are your top three cartoon theme songs? And this one I knew already, like, because we we actually recently had this conversation like mm -hmm. elsewhere. So I'm already going to put it on there on the list as a honorable mention. And that's Pokemon because yes, forever. Yes. And I'm, and I know there are a couple series out there that exists because the kid likes, loves Pokemon and will request to watch it as he goes to bed almost every other night. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't know if the theme songs are still the same because I don't really, I'm not in there watching it with him, but the original, the OG Pokemon theme song back when there was 150 uh -huh. Pokemon. Yeah, that's the one. I'm not yes. necessarily talking about the poker rap because I don't think that considers <laughs> that not, qualifies. No. It's not a theme song. It's I mean just, it's it's cool, but it ain't a theme song. Right, right. So and but that's as we talked about before, that's just a go-getter. But I'm talking way too much about one that's not my top <laughs> three. It's it's a top five. Wait, no, top six, because mm -hmm. I have six listed here. Because what I did was I listed out all my favorites, and then I was like, okay, let me just pick the ones that I really like. Um, so number three is the Boondocks theme song. And it's... Yes, yes. It's, yeah, it, it hits. It still slaps. It's everything that I need it to be. And it's motivating. It's, it's got a whole like motivational speech out there. Like, hey, you know, I, um, I'm the stone that the builder refused. I am an individual. Or, or the yes the, yeah and i almost yeah let me just stop right there because i don't want to <laughs> misquote it even though it's been a ringtone on my phone for like years and i do have it memorized but like i'm already like getting flustered number two <laughs> is darkwing duck and yeah that's a bop it is and i had a really hard time picking this one out of all of the other ones from the disney afternoon lineup that i recall mm -hmm. growing up um and i'm just gonna say it DuckTales is another one, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to have it all be Disney. So I had to mix it up a little bit. So that's why that's why DuckTales isn't on here. And I'm like, they can easily be inter, inter, uh, swapped out for me because they're both classics. They're both hits. But mm -hmm. Darkwing Duck, it's got a little bit more edge to it. Um, although both of them, both of the singers, they go hard. Like they're just giving it their all. Like they're, you know, just hand them the Grammy already. But yeah. Number one, and I feel it has to be number one because anytime it's brought up, anytime you hear it, you just get motivated, you just get activated, and you're ready to go. And you actually may not, actually, I don't know if you've heard it yet before. I'm pretty sure you have, but it's the X Men theme song, the original OG. <gasps> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't yes. sure because I know you like the other X-Men cartoon, the, the one I that do. came out a little later, but this is the original one. And, um, and I know I was doing kind of like a little bit of a marathon watching it with Ashley. And then anytime during the theme song, oh, I can't even remember now what part it was, but I, I would always like stress it anytime. It, oh, there's a bell, like, like almost like a, um, uh, I want to say like a tower a bell that's in the tower or something and it's like dong and it happens i think twice in in the song and anytime really? that happened i would like i don't know tap ashley's shoulder or something or as if i was <laughs> ringing the bell or something i don't know uh -huh. just just being annoying but you know, but also emphasizing <laughs> because she's she plays instruments or she, uh, and you know she should you know uh appreciate that i appreciate that so i'm like so I'm really stressing. It's like, see that, hear that bell part? Yes. Now you hear it. You'll never unhear it again. <laughs> I will be listening forevermore for the bell now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, it's for the, whom the bell tolls is for the mutants. So <laughs> yes. So nice. yeah, those are my top three. And what cartoon theme songs come to mind for you? Um, so I have to refer back to Seven Deadly Sins. Now they do a, an interesting thing where they change theme songs. Um, I can't even say every season because I want to say like I'm doing a rewatch right now. 
just because I love the show so much. And I'm I'm doing I'm in season one still. And they're still on the first theme song that I ever fell in love with. And it's just awesome. And I like want to learn it in the original Japanese so I can sing along with it because I know the tune. I just don't know the words. Um, but I want to say about midway through the season, it's going to change to a different theme song. And I, I, I think that is maybe common with anime. I'm not sure. I'm pretty, pretty new to the like actual anime scene. So that I'm not does sure, tend but... to happen. Yeah. Because okay. um, another show that I like, not necessarily for the theme song, but um, just in general is Food Wars. And I know mm-hmm. that changed a couple times. And it wasn't, mm-hmm. I don't think it even changed seasons. And all of a sudden, like, wait, is this a, like, not yeah. a different show, but like, why? What's happening? It's just they change it. I think it's just, uh, it's just part of the anime culture. But hmm. I'm currently on the original theme song that started this season. And I love it. I, like it's so I just it's so cool and it's got a lot of like to me it's got Pokemon vibes like it's just very catchy and like gets you into the show and it's like popish and I just love it mm. um uh oh I had another one what was it I don't want to steal the boondocks that's a good one no <laughs> um <laughs> um what other cartoons am I watching right now dang it oh I had some other ones but they're gone now Huh. No, no. I'm also watching Doctor Stone, which is an anime, but I don't think that theme song catches me. That's an amazing show, but um, huh? I think I'm gonna have to stop there because I honestly I had another one, but I can't remember it. Um, and I'm looking at I'm like scanning my DVD collection now <laughs> just to see if I'm missing just to it. Check, but, just to make sure, right? You didn't miss anything. Yeah. But I do second like the Pokemon theme that you mentioned. I second um, the Boon. Oh, Steven Universe. That's one that I love. Um, oh, yes. Yes, you're right. That is a great one. <laughs> I love it. And so like every time. Me yeah, you and, can't skip it. Right. I'm sorry. You go on. can't skip it. But every time me and the girls, my, my three, my three bonus girls, when we watch it, um, we have to sing it out loud. Like mm. it just it's something you don't skip. You sing it out loud. It's amazing. And yeah, so I love I love the theme song for Steven Universe. I we think that may have been the only are one. The crystal, yeah, I'm crystal sorry. gems will always say I just it's great. Mm, I love it. It is, it is. And it's like strong affirmations. Like, ugh, I love it. hmm I believe I don't know if that song I never checked. I don't know if that song is on Spotify, but I I know that they do have an album or at least two, because there there's other singing that goes on throughout the show with other songs that, you know, that do hit pretty well. So, I mean, as I mentioned, I probably should just check. Why don't I do that? But yeah. either way, it's that, that is definitely a good one for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I guess you got your, what, your two or three. And I guess it's okay if you, you have one that's also, you know, <laughs> boondocks. So uh, <laughs> I'll take the boondocks then. <laughs> right. And, um, and it's funny you mentioned that because I, I did put on, um, well, not boondocks, but ducktails as I, Brought, brought that up earlier and i i will put on like cartoons for the kid to watch before he goes to bed or goes to sleep and mm-hmm. he chose ducktales i'm like okay cool i'm gonna hang around while the theme song plays and then i'm gonna leave mm-hmm. after because mm-hmm. this is a great song you and don't like leave during the theme song no no you, you don't and i had to but I, I think i don't know what what it was i think i was disappointed like it was too short like i needed because there is a longer extended version and I know this because they played it for the DuckTales movie that came out, I think, in the mm-hmm. early 90s. And it's just more like just ad-libbing, basically. And that's where, it, you know, that singer earns his Grammy. So mm-hmm. nice, nice. But it wasn't there in this one. I'm like, eh. <sighs> it was a little anticlimactic for me, but it was it's still good. It's still, you know, a little warm hug to the heart. And then I was able to move on. But I, I get it. And I Steven Universe, uh, that does it to me. Um, and it's great. Yeah, great. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and the other one, since it's on here on my list, is Adventure Time. It's super short, but it just builds up and then it just ends. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's nice in that way. But I, I only added it because it's one that I like to sing along to when it comes on and it makes me happy. So my last uh, question here comes from Tito and Tito. he gave me a really good one as did, I mean, all of these were good, 
but I tied it back to Nick a little bit with emotional cinematic scenes, a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he said, what are your top movie trailers? And I'm like, oh. Now, and I also tweeted this to him later. I'm like, this is something I could spend a whole episode talking about how I feel about movie trailers and some of my favorite ones. And sometimes there are trailers that I really love and the movie is terrible or yes. Or there's the case where movie, the trailers don't accurately tell you what the movie is about or Mm -hmm. um, what are other things? Um, Teaser trailers. I had to include in this list because as I went back to research, just to check, I'm like, wait a second now, is it the teaser or is it actually one of the trailers? And sometimes nowadays they come out with like at least three different versions of a trailer. So I didn't go that deep into it, but I will say which is which and what so what so what forth and so forth and what on. So <laughs> I will mention all the ones I have on my list. And trust me, there are more, but I'm going to just say what they are. And then I will go into a little bit more detail with the actual top three. So the runners up or the honorable mentions uh is vice which came out i think like two years ago it stars um christian bale as dick cheney the movie itself Mm -hmm. is okay it's not glorifying anyone anyone great (laughs) at all but uh the trailer itself i thought was awesome what i loved Mm -hmm. about the trailer was the use of music using the song the killers um oh my god what is the name of the movie um i'm the man i think it's called and just the way that that's crafted that trailer. And then the way that the, the title comes up and it has his, uh, uh, silhouette and the glasses. I love it. The movie mm-hmm. itself, <laughs> meh, but the trailer loved it. Um, <laughs> another honorable mention, which really should have made the list. I mean, I literally made this decision just before we started recording. <laughs> okay. I chose not to include it on the list, even though I'm about to talk about it now, but this is one <laughs> where the teaser trailer that came out, was really awesome, really got me. And it just started out with, um, what's his face? Oh my God, what is his name? Um, his jazz singer. Uh, <laughs> I almost did a horrible know. impression of him. Um, he sings Frank a wonderful... Sinatra. No. No, he's a black guy, a wonderful world. Um, oh, uh, oh. Louis Armstrong, there it is. Yes. Yes. And um, it's, it's only a minute long. It just... Starts out with him singing, what a beautiful world or wonderful world, Earth explodes. And then (laughs) there's just some titles that come up saying like, you know, this, uh, what if your adventure begins after the world ends? And then uh, it shifts into the stars and then it has the thumbs up and then Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it's just, it's cinematic. I love it. And it just, (laughs) it's just the teaser, but the trailer itself is also awesome because it it shows you all these clips from the movie and it's just insanity, but it makes Mm -hmm. sense once you watch the movie and the trailer's funny and it's got all the little bits that you need to make you want to go see it. Great trailer. Didn't make the list. (laughs) (laughs) And this may seem, and this is, this is why it was so difficult to make this list because the next one is one I decided no, because I already have too many comic book movies on my actual list. That Mm -hmm. is why Black Panther is not on the list officially. Okay. Okay. It's it's actually the Black Panther teaser trailer. So if you ever want to go, and I do recommend going to go watch this trailer, Uh right? It's just the very first one. And the reason why it's this one is because this one has uh, uh, run the jewels, um, what uh, legend has it that song plays in the background and it's when the titles revealed again mm-hmm. when titles are revealed sometimes for me that is what makes the trailer just like oh it's this movie it and that's how, what it gets me like it mm-hmm. gets like these little beams of light hit the beat as like the the letters are revealed for uh Black Panther oh just goosebumps mm-hmm. all over um <laughs> I love it so that would be you know, one of those. Number three <laughs> is Infinity mm-hmm. War, the first trailer for Infinity War. And uh, I remember when that was revealed that day, I think they revealed it on the Good Morning America, but everybody like us, we were like at work. So we got it on Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that trailer with 
um, I think it, I think that's the one with all the Avengers just talking about like how we were all brought together to do this thing. And then it comes in with Thanos talking about like, I hope they remember you and just, mm. Ooh. just, just setting you up for like, Oh, this is huge. This is different than all the other Avengers movies, all the yeah. other Marvel movies we've seen so far, not realizing what was going to be in store for us later. So that in itself was amazing. And I, I, I since went back and watched all the other Infinity War and Endgame trailers, but none of them really affected me the way that the Infinity War, the first one did. So, yeah, yeah. And Agreed. That all, right. That also made me really notice uh, the Avengers theme, which I know has been playing throughout all the movies, but I never mm-hmm. really took the time to notice it until this time. So well use usage of that. Um, and just when you watch the time go, like, they spend time, like even on that opening Marvels or opening Marvel thing with all the, the characters. Like the, fan, the fanfare. Yes. Like they mm-hmm. spend time on that. I'm like, wow, you don't see that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how you knew this, this was this was big. Number two, <laughs> the movie Ali. Uh, okay. First of all, I do love that movie. But the yeah. trailer, the trailer has really stuck with me for a very long time. This was little did I know my first introduction to Sam Cooke, who everyone knows uh, is someone that I love. Yes. Uh, I forgot that he was actually, you know, part of the trailer as well, as well as uh-huh. part of the movie. Okay. And there's that. Um, and then there's this usage of like the, the flash bulbs, like back in the day, back with photographers. Yep. Used the, yeah. So the yep. way they use that as they put in these little, you know, intro pieces about who this man is and mm-hmm. like the legend he becomes. And and then they switch up the, the music to, uh, oh man, I, I feel like it's a Moby song, but it's just, it's just something that's like a house jam basically as it yeah. ramps up and he's, you know, saying lines throughout the movie and just getting you all excited for this, this, you know, powerhouse of a biopic, which mm-hmm. he did not win the Oscar for, but that's okay. We'll move on. Uh, um, ending <laughs> not bitter, not bitter about that or anything. With him beating the, dr- not bitter, not bitter. Like I'm not as mad about that as I am about some other people who should have been given Oscars for their great work. Chadwick Boseman in, um, I keep wanting to call it a James Brown movie. Uh, get on up. Anyway, uh-huh. um, ending with um, Ali banging on the drums, saying the champ is here. Uh, yeah. Great trailer. Check it out, please. Number one, okay. and I'd even go back to YouTube to rewatch it because as soon as I saw this question, this was my first answer. And it's always been my favorite Ooh. trailer. And it Let's still is it. to this day. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear my, my <laughs> throat there. Number one trailer, and I do recommend checking it out as soon as possible. Sin City. That's it. Ooh, I agree with that one. Mm-hmm. That, yes. I okay, so I haven't even seen all of Sin City, but the trailer mm-hmm. really was like, "Oh, look at this! What is this? Oh my god!" It, <laughs> yeah, it it just draws you in. I agree. And it was not only just like I I really enjoyed the movie too because that that made me go out to the theater to see it. I remember where I saw it and how I felt after I saw it. Like I just left the mm-hmm. theater just having appreciation for color because of what that movie does with color. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but the trailer itself, um, the way, and I'm, and really what does it, and there's a theme for a lot of these, and that's the music that they use for trailers and editing to the music. And yes. that, that is a, a really key feature here. And I'm trying to find the band's name, but the song is called cells. Okay. Um, and there is an instrumental version and, oh, the band is called the servant. The song is called Cells. I'm pretty sure you can probably still find the instrumental version, like they what they Mm -hmm. used in the trailer. But the song itself is pretty cool, too. So if you're someone who kind of hates your job, um, that song's (laughs) for you. (laughs) Ooh, all right. (laughs) So, yeah, check it out. And I know that's something I probably should have recommended to you, Cordy, because there's times where, like, my job is killing me. I'm like, here, listen to this song. So, (laughs) but it's also just a great song, even if you don't hate your job. It's just it makes you want to like get up and move and, and just, I don't know. It, it fits the trailer so well, the way it looks. And then the cast, when that's like each of them being shown. And I think about that trailer, honestly, with before this question even came up, I think about that trailer, maybe at least once every couple of weeks, honestly. Wow. That, that much of an impact, eh? 
between the music, like, cause the music will remind me of the trailer or the movie, uh-huh. the movie uh-huh. itself. I'm like, man, I wish there was more of that music or the, the way the trailer made me feel. I wish it was more in the movie, but the movie mm-hmm. itself is still awesome on its own terms, but yeah. <sighs> yeah. So yeah, Sin City is my number one answer for that one. And nice. I guess Good you could choice. hear the passion in my voice of yes, I how can. and why. I, yeah. I get it though. It's really, it really is awesome. And I'm even putting it in into at least this spatial universe. So in case anyone hears this, um, and I, I've done some research trying to actually see if I can get into it. But if that ended up being a career for me, like mm-hmm. making trailers, because mm-hmm. that is an art form, you do, you can win awards it for it. The, yeah. um, I it takes would a lot of know, talent to do that. It does. It does. And it's finding, I, I don't, I don't really know the full aspect of how trailers are made like i'm assuming they have to be shown at least bits of the movie like here these are the parts that are finished make something out of this yeah Um, or at least and and the fun thing about it is like you can make an awesome trailer and the movie's still trash like but that's not it's not really your fault your fault you were given what you had you had a job to do get the butts in the seats Uh and that's That's the so i think that's one of the main purposes of a trailer is to build hype and Mm -hmm. to inform hey this the new thing is coming out you know but i think i think trailer making is an art form completely separate from the actual movie itself like you can tell i mean i've seen one of my favorite things on youtube is seeing how you know people take a trailer like make a fan trailer or something and they turn like a comedy into like a horror or <laughs> right. into something sci-fi like so it really it really is an art form to itself that you can you it's it it has a lot of power mm-hmm. just by the nature of what you're doing so I, I love, love trailers <laughs> I love trailers so much I love when they do when I do what you just talked about um mm-hmm. I haven't been watching them recently, but I know usually they would do one for like every year. They'll like make a trailer for like all the movies that came out that year uh, and oh. just make a make a super cut, basically. And, yeah. and I used to do that like every once in a while. I would go around looking for super cuts of things like all of like movies that came out a year or one year. Um, maybe uh, um, uh, super cuts of maybe something, a particular theme mm-hmm. or... Um, trying to sizzle reels that's also something that kind of is similar to that where they would show where studios will show like hey these are all the movies we've got coming up netflix does this pretty much every month so yeah that's true and i even picked up some like a christmas song that i really like (laughs) from one of their (laughs) like december uh, sizzle reels and it's i I love it it's it's all part of editing so hey out there if you're looking for an editor um i am for hire hire for hire Yes, Not for with, volunteer with work. US, for hire, so. US dollars. Yeah, right. US dollars. Real, or if we can convert it to dollars. whatever, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, oh, sure, sure. I, we're we're, we're international, but money has to be exchanged. This is true. <laughs> I, f- I kind of forgot the Brazil. Hi, Brazil. Because I know you, uh, somebody out there listens. Um, but yes. <laughs> um, are any trailers coming to mind for you? Yes. So I love inception a whole lot and so um Mm. i remember the inception trailer there's a few of them i'm sure but i I don't remember the details of the trailers just because the movie is so embedded into my heartstrings and but i I remember i remember the the inception trailer and how i'm just like yep i'm there you know i'm a Mm. chris nolan fan as it is and then um huge leo dicaprio fan and so it, it just kind of was like, duh, I'm going to see this. But the trailer is like, oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, it just did it for me. Um, another one would be, I think it's Us, where he used the like horror oh, version Oh, my goodness. Of... You are absolutely right. Yes. <laughs> Didn't he do Five <laughs> on it like he used them? Yes. Like, yeah, and, he made it, okay. and he made it super yes. creepy. Yes. Which I, I ended up putting on a playlist because... After a while, I'm like, I got to hear it again. <laughs> yes. I love it. I, love I it too. still haven't it's... seen us and I don't plan on it, you know, but it's not, not scary. Soon. It is not scary. Sure. Uh huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I'm, yeah, but that trailer, I just, I love it did a it. number on you. Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> I, I, yes. I get it. 
Um, that is a great trailer. Yes, you're right. It, it really is. It I'm really sorry. Is. I didn't react the same way with Inception because I haven't seen that trailer in so long that I need to go. It's back been and... a while for me. I just know. I just know that, you know, Inception is like one of my all time favorite movies. And so I'm sure I saw the trailer at one point and was like, oh, yeah, I'm there. It may not have mm. been a great trailer, honestly, but <laughs> I guess because of my bias with the movie itself, I'm That's sure. That's what I was that's what I was trying to do. Like when I, w- when I made this list, I was like, okay, let me not be biased against like my favorite movies. And I did check, gotcha. I checked oceans 13. I'm like, you know, it's a cool trailer, but I didn't do it for you. It didn't quite hit all the marks. Like it, it did hit a lot of them. Like it was, it's, it's a trailer. I like, I do. Yeah. I didn't watch oceans 11 trailer because I never really saw the trailer for that movie. I saw the movie like kind of randomly. I'm like, Oh my God, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. And so I and Oceans 12, I think I remember more of the graphics than mm-hmm. the actual trailer itself. So that's why they didn't make the list because I I was biased. I already liked yeah. the movies, but um, well, and I think some trailers really aren't just cinematic masterpieces. They really are right. Just they hit the basic marks of getting, you know, summing up the movie to to garner interest and. You know, maybe somebody, you know, to, to make audience the audience um, aware of what the movie may be about and if they may Correct. be interested in seeing. Sometimes that's like all a trailer does. And I think that's OK. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just a whole other experience. So I can't I honestly can't say from memory if any of the Inception trailers did that for me. So that is maybe my cheat. Um, <laughs> but I honestly <laughs> It's got to be a pretty, I can't say that that was one of, like, I know that the trailer for us was, mm-hmm. and, and maybe I am biased just simply because I haven't seen the movie, but I really just think that was a fantastic trailer too. Oh, it was. I mean, the fact that it left such an, an uh, a mark on, yeah. I was going to say on us, but like just <laughs> everyone that saw, like, regardless if you've seen the movie or not, you know that uh-huh. trailer. Like You know the trailer. It was yeah. so iconic. I mean everybody every black person knows i got five on it and to hear it in that oh it just <laughs> oh i love it it just it's so brilliant so brilliant mm, yeah i may end so up watching good. it later that's a trailer not not the movie i've seen the movie so it's like that <laughs> that's why i'm telling you like you you can handle it it's you can handle uh, it just i i mean as i normally tell you for things that are borderline creepy or whatever to watch in the daytime just so you're safe uh-huh. and then you can you know find some <laughs> cartoons afterwards like some I mean, ducktails or something you. so i hear what you're i hear what you're trying to sell what you're trying to put down mm-hmm. do you have a third one that, that's coming no mind? nothing else comes to mind i feel like there are many others but for time's sake i right there's nothing right. else that just pops out right now um but, I'm I mean, more of a, hmm? I'm, as far as movies, cinematic experiences, my jam is like soundtracks and stuff. So I could talk about that all day. I do love a good trailer. Don't get me wrong, but that's not something that like lives in my head rent free. Um, mm-hmm. So that's something I have to like <laughs> think about a little bit harder uh, and it doesn't just come up immediately. Unfortunately, that is, that is a good one. That, that is a good way to, to actually put how the Usher trailer actually was for a lot of people it just lived in our heads for a while Mm -hmm. and and it's just a patient for the movie which i mean when it came out people had mixed feelings about it anyway but that's any movie really but yeah it it was what it was but that trailer it hit in such a way where like Mm -hmm. oh let's pay attention to this (laughs) Mm -hmm. so so yeah that, that that is a good one that is a good one well, that's all that we have. I mean, if you like, uh, dear listener, if you want to know more of like what our top three is, then do by all means send it to us. I'll just say email in dupod at gmail.com. That is one of the easiest ways. And it doesn't matter if you're on Twitter or Facebook, uh, even though it exists there too. Uh, at least I will get it mm-hmm. directly and, and I will have it and I'll have it for next time. But we will close up the mailbag for now. We don't have any, any additional questions. And if we did, I'm sorry if I forgot it. I think there may have been some leftover from uh, last year, <laughs> but I Uh-oh. don't remember. Another letter from our listeners. But before we close out, we do, we really have to take a moment to honor uh, our Black history fact for today, or 
Oh, I phrased that weird. Our Black History <laughs> fact, we are honoring the great, the courageous, the brave Eugene Goodman. Black History. Black History. Black History. Black History. Facts. Yes. Now, uh, in case you don't know that per, uh, that name, uh, that is the capital officer who basically led away the uh, riotous riot folk um, mm-hmm. from... Uh, I almost want to say last week because time is so weird still. Well, it was two <laughs> uh, weeks ago. To... You're you're close. Right, right. At the time of this recording. Mm-hmm. Right. It just felt like it just the way time is, it feels like it was last week. Yeah, it does. But it was two weeks ago. Yeah. So I had a a little bit here. I'll read about it. Uh, in case you don't know, but um, we just need to take that this time to honor him a little bit. During the violent riot at the U.S. Capitol um, that Wednesday, that fateful morning, a mob of Trump supporters breached security and entered the building as members of Congress were gathered inside. One officer was seen risking his life to, to divert an angry mob away from the Senate chamber, leading the group in the opposite direction at a crucial moment when the lawmakers were not yet safely locked down. Video t- uh, taken... Um, shows the black Capitol police officer standing in the hallway a few steps ahead of the mob, trying to hold them back and then heading up a staircase as the men chase after him. Here's the scary. Mo- oh, well, never mind. That's part of a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and the mob continues to follow the officer who is alone and shout at him as he makes his way to another area of the Capitol where more law enforcement awaits. Mm-hmm. And, um, the harrowing video went viral with nearly 10 million views on the post. As of Monday, the Capitol police officer has been identified as Eugene Goodman, who is being hailed as a hero for diverting the intimidating mob away from the Senate chamber. Mm-hmm. And Goodman is an army veteran who spent time in Iraq, CBS, Washington, DC affiliate. Oh, they, they're reporting it. Sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. While the Capitol police leadership has been criticized for the security failures and its chief has resigned, many are praising Goodman for his brave and quick thinking reaction as a crucial at a crucial moment in the crisis. Yeah. And he deserves just, every good thing. Well, you know that he I don't know his position title, but he was promoted. Um, I have it right to, here. Oh, you, oh, I'm you know, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. Go it's ahead. okay. I was, that's what I was looking for. It, uh, he is promoted to acting deputy Senate Sergeant at Arms. Yes. And um, yes. Yeah, sorry, you can carry on from there. Well, that and you know he was, um, he was picked. I'm not sure by Kamala Vice President uh, Harris. Excuse me, um, but he did escort her and Second Gentleman M. Hoff to you know, to um, the inauguration. And, you know, he was, he he was definitely honored there. And I just, I love that glow up for him. I'm so glad that he is being recognized Mm -hmm. and honored and more importantly promoted with probably more pay um, because (laughs) that's, I mean, yeah, it's great to be honored and love that for him, but also pay him more. Like, so I'm glad that that's happening for him. Um, he definitely deserves all the good things coming to him. And I just, I'm, I'm happy that it, you know, he was able to remain safe, but also do a really good job protecting the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And many of his cohorts couldn't do that. And he did it single-handedly without, thank God, without any injury to his personal, his personal self, you know? So Mm -hmm. I just, I'm happy for him. I am too. Um, and he didn't have to, I know when that, that when I first saw the video, I, I thought, you know, he was running away, but not knowing like the full uh, story. Yeah. And I'm right. like, Oh he man, was poor, them poor away, guy. Distracting right. Them. But mm-hmm. to know like, Oh, that's what he was doing. Wow. Much mm-hmm. like all the respect in the world. So that, yeah. that is a great honor for him to be able to lead uh, the vice president. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, in the inauguration at the time and mm-hmm. and for him to be you know given get that promotion so yes because i'm pretty sure there's a bunch more vacant spots now like you know the chief resigned right and um yeah. some of them were taking selfies so yeah yep. just yeah crazy day crazy couple of weeks and uh, um i don't know there's there's normalcy kind of 
by the and I think we might have mentioned this already that we're recording these in separate times. Had it been different, we would have recorded this episode before the inauguration happened. So we wouldn't mm-hmm. have known some of these things that we know now. But fortunately we do yeah. and we're able to give honor where honor is due. So yes. Eugene Goodman, we salute you and yes. we thank you. We appreciate your service. So but yeah. Um and that that's gonna do it for part B of this episode. <laughs> and um once again, do you have any I was going to say recommendations, but I, I feel like we may have thrown several out there. Not that they're actual recommendations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we did. Yeah, we did, more or less. So We did. <laughs> uh, but uh, in that case, do you have any place that you want to be found if you want to be found? Like uh, where people can find you? Should I, you know, choose to be found, you can find me. And, choose, and should you ch- um, choose to accept the challenge? That's a lot of alliteration there, but... You a know. lot and you almost could make it through <laughs> <laughs> almost it almost got me mm-hmm. but you can find me over on the twitters at i am k hinton and uh if you find me i may have to find you back okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then um you can follow me on all things at and go to indube.com to find ways to connect with us as i mentioned before uh emailing us at indube at gmail.com you can ask us questions, leave us comments, and I'll read them. And, you know, it'd be a good time. I'm also kind of on Facebook. I'm going to try to use it a little bit more this year. So there is a Facebook page. Go join it. And I'll try to remember to post things there as well, such as links to web <laughs> webisodes, episodes, and maybe some of the links that we talk about and videos that we talk about here. Let's build a community. Let's interact. I don't Let's like do Facebook, it. but I'm going to try to do it for you because I know there's quite <laughs> a few of you that use Facebook and I want to interact with you too. So yeah. So I'll do my best. Um, please rate, comment, and share the pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, now Pandora. Um, hey. We're also on iTunes Radio, iTunes media i don't have the app on my phone but i do know we were put on that like a maybe a month or so ago mm-hmm. uh, but again where pods are found so whatever app you use more than likely we're probably on it um thank you so much for supporting listening stopping by and pressing play tell someone you value that you value them live without regrets live for the folks you love please wash your legs your face the bottoms of your feet the undersides of your dishes i've been your benevolent host Sir Watson. and remember if the world didn't suck, we don't fall off. No. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Indu Podcast, which was recorded from the south side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive and is part of the Indu Network. Want more Indu? Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Indu and on Facebook at Indu Pod. You can contact us and send Ask Indu questions by emailing indupod at gmail.com. Want to support or donate? Find the T Public Store or become a patron on Patreon where subscribing gives you perks and extra things from the Indube Network. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and share the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever else podcasts are found. And of course, visit Indube.com for all of this and much more. Thank you so much for letting us entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Until next time. Use your words, Chief. Good boy. This has been another 3SFX production.